Hello neighbors, it's me, Baphomet. You've summoned me to be your guide to the wonderful world of Satanism. Here, all of your questions are answered. And we prove that just because you're unholy doesn't mean you also can't be wholesome. Today we're doing a little satanic art appreciation, so get ready to be cultured as fuck. The devil has always been a favorite subject for painters, sculptors, and other visual artists. And it's no wonder, his modeling fees are very reasonable. Sometimes people ask me, what's my favorite image of the devil? The answer, of course, is the autographed 8x11 glossy he gave me for Valentine's Day. I keep it on my refrigerator. But a close second is the statue under the pulpit at St. Paul's Cathedral in Liege, Belgium. The title of this work is The Genius of Evil, but me and my friends have our own name for it. Hot Satan! Ow! Liege Cathedral is renowned around the world for its treasury museum and for its beautiful religious statuary. In 1842, the cathedral installed a statue of Satan, created by sculptor and budding Mark Twain lookalike, Joseph Geefs, behind its pulpit. Titled The Angel of Evil, Geefs created a gorgeous, classically inspired image of the devil as a serene looking young man with monstrous wings, amazing hair, and a really cut body. A 19th century Belgian art dealer said of the Angel of Evil, this magnificent life-size statue can compete with the best modern productions of this kind, and it makes one think unwittingly of the sublime style of the ancients. Personally, I think all types of human bodies are beautiful, but let me tell you, I could really go for a bite of that forbidden fruit. Ow! Apparently the churchy types didn't like the idea of Satan being hotter than hell. According to Brooklyn art historian Shauna H., Lucifer's highly eroticized body and gaze proved problematic for a sculpture that was meant to evoke the sense that the church had overcome the temptation of evil. It even attracted the attention of the local press, who reported that the girls of the congregation became distracted by the statue. Not to be discouraged, Cathedral Fathers commissioned Geef's younger brother, Guillaume Geef's, seen here with finely sculpted mutton chops, to create a new Satan statue. Hopefully one a little less ahem virile than the one they had. In 1848, he delivered. The genius of evil, genius meaning spirit in this context, by the way, is very similar to the first statue, but with some key differences. The new Satan is posed in a less alluring way. His face looks pained. He's in chains, and if you look closely, you can see he has horns and slightly inhuman features to maybe make him appear less enticing. I have to say, I'm personally very tired of the implication that horns are unattractive. I get that kind of discrimination from hat makers all the time. I do not need it for my art history, too. What the fuck is this? If anybody was hoping people would think the new Lucifer was any less distracting, they had another thing coming. If anything, the emotional turmoil evident in this new statue makes it even more appealing than the first. Today, both statues enjoy renewed popularity on the internet, thanks in no small part to the story of how they were made. In 2008, a Michelin writer called the sculpture superb and so successful that Satanists regularly come to meditate at its feet. Does that ever happen to you? I have that same problem. I think the real lesson of both of these statues is that you can try and ugly up the devil if you want, but people always find something beautiful and sympathetic in the very human example that the Satan myth sets for us. Also, dead ass. Until next time, keep living deliciously. Get more everyday Satanism with our podcast, Black Mass Appeal. You can also check us out on our website, satanicbaria.com.